Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Amandeep and I work as a senior software engineer with uh, Hybrid Green Tech and before that I have I've been working in banking uh, principal IT consultant for event streaming projects related to Kafka. And uh, these are the 10 best practices basically which I have uh, put here, uh, learned out of experience, learned of like hard times, learned out of uh, a crazy bad mistakes and uh, realizing going back and forth so these are like those two, those 10 practices are uh, not in any particular order but they are all equally useful i will say this way <clears throat> to get started like why we need event streaming or oh, the event streaming is uh, like any anything happening in the world it affects the business if a business is running 24 by 7 uh, it needs to respond to probably those events and we are not talking just about uh, stock market and market volatility and fluctuation in price and executing those trades we're talking about like uh, new products which are emerging around us like uh, flash loans in crypto space if you're uh, watching uh, in the DeFi universe uh, smart grids with uh, within an uh, electricity distribution with uh, uh, who's contributing to the grid at what time and what, at what uh, like a 250 millisecond you have to kind of measure the voltage and based on that uh, the relay uh, has to act upon and of course e-commerce like web events transactions and all the user interactions uh, if you can find out the user is having a particular behavior repeatedly like can you take any quick action can can you have any so basically there are all the cases for event streaming now coming to uh, like uh, there's no one argument which come like oh do i invest in streaming i can store them i can produce consume you know like the typical classical way uh, do I need streaming if I have storage? Maybe, maybe not. You can have data lake, database, time series database or another data warehouse. But what about your data shape, size, criteria, querying uh, pro properties, uh, data cleanup, how big that responsibility will be? And uh, come on, like um, how has been existing data warehouse uh, helping you? Uh, do you require to segregate those even events uh, once you're collected? then why don't you collect in a right way or right shape or uh, stream them yeah so uh, some terminology i think uh, most of the audience would know here but like topology as we call in um, in event streaming is like a is a graph of stream processing nodes uh, basically those are like the pieces of logic which are in a certain sequence which is a topology so there's like a source processors there are processors processing nodes and they are like sync processors and then um, the concept of mediator eda versus broker eda i believe um, you have a kind of basic understanding and the cqrs command query response segregation because for the same data uh, you can have um, a read heavy interface and you can, for the same data you can have a write heavy interface also so command and query uh, are segregated Event streaming approaches. Let's also kind of like throw the um, uh, uh, area here to discuss a lambda architecture. We discuss all the time. Oh, it's a, it's a real time batch. Then this is something called kappa architecture. Kappa is basically like it. It it has a characteristics of both batch and real time. But I'm not getting into discussion of those here. But this is what you must be hearing around. But everything with all these architectures and data warehouses and data lakes goes wrong until number one, number one, one out of 10. Mm -hmm. Setting expectations, setting expectations related to events. Why are we doing this? Okay, events are coming and we're gonna act upon them, sure. If what is the order of these events? Do we receive the events in the same order as they are occurring in the real world? reliability availability guarantee of delivery there's they look like computer science terms but they are actually business terms here and then if we look more is uh, uh, guaranteed delivery is and kind of another uh, discussion itself uh, event volume how many even priority which event is better than the other one even size what's the size of payload coming how much i should plan for and if uh, i have to act upon uh, quickly on certain event coming it better be lean so that i can parse it uh, quickly <laughs> for example an external event or maybe you have to sync up with some other event in the outside world to call it a, actually an event 
maybe it was a false alarm so maybe it's not an event so setting all those expectations there is the most important thing i will say i might repeat the word most for all the 10 because 10 i find are our kind of finds um, so setting expectations is the first one then keeping in mind that you are not trying to build a legacy application again uh, what has been a purpose of dumping data in data warehouse or a kind of like a big uh, chunk may mainframe may or anything how about splitting the data into domains uh, then you have a read heavy and write heavy way of uh, um, approaching the same data of that domains uh, maybe that's the first start it's it's not it's not we are not even defining event set we are first defining those those blocks those domains which will have their data changing based on events coming so those deconstructing those domains and subdomains is very important when, when we classify the events and create those event dictionaries which correspond to changes in data dictionary um being aware of the business gerunds gerunds are like a complicated relationship and a fun way to be said but basically from er diagramming perspective as you say like they are the composite entities and that's the thing where sometimes um, some data ownership responsibilities fall between the chairs when you kind of split the domains and then you cannot really find because it's a composite entity with some attribute value from this domain and some from this domain and is useful for some business purpose which is not applicable to these domains is a kind of like a composite entity who will maintain its data ownership so that uh, also kind of a things like if uh, if uh, an entity of a customer relation with a bank or customer relationship history is re received which kind of contains the customer transactions and customer data and we are talking about customer is one domain and transactions another domain so customer customer transaction history so this is a garret so how do we maintain that like if if this data object has to be transported to, like whose responsibility is that if a certain event has come and it has to carry this as a payload or a sub payload um who, who is the kind of a data change owner or responsible domain so such decisions also uh, you gotta gotta get into not over investing in a single platform uh, maybe the slide will be a slight misnomer but what i'm actually trying to say is uh, uh, don't be so hard on yourself like we have this technology and that's all we got so this typically happens with um, when you're streaming uh, events in kafka for example and um, the, the data is going through like a, from one topic with certain processing enrichment aggregations to another topic to another a typical like how topology works and when i say that like i will quote my previous organization and we're like our, oh our data is in sql sure but it's json data passing transforming json aggregations json field value injections and then it lands on a new topic sure and it has a state store intermediate store also and that intermediate store now is sql wow so this JSON, which is still intermediate, gets turned into a, a, a relational row to go into an SQL database, read again from there, converted to a JSON. So what I'm trying to say is like SQL and no SQL. So have a pragmatic decision like, oh, yeah, for intermediate topic storage, I'm fine with no SQL. What's, what's so wrong with it? Because maybe for if I say my hard business database is SQL so sure I will reach there but uh, I will not try to kind of like do a vendor uh, uh, comparison uh, talk about Confluent, uh, Apache Kafka and what's on, Red Panda, Amazon's MSK somewhere, somewhere it is there too. Um, each has its own pros and cons so kind of measure maybe you need more than one. Uh, for example uh, if Red Panda has a single binary uh, and it's a Kafka API compatible uh, and you have, you have already kind of implemented Kafka in your system and, and because Kafka brought a lot of JVM in your technology stack and your new, your new developer hires do not like it so that Panda is kind of like can go very well with existing Kafka uh, same thing with if you're using Confluent 
and um, if you are not just doing the streaming the streaming uh, wave with the kafka streaming dsl and you get addicted to using ksql it's very convenient uh, you have an alternative like materialize also a materialized database which kind of gives you those materialized views on different topics and then you can you know, do whatever you like just like almost like ksql because uh, people who speak or uh, use apache kafka or msk um, versus those who use confluent they kind of like ksql is one thing that means other than some kind of a uh, connectors also so that's like uh, go pragmatic uh, not over investing in one single platform and then very important i know i'm repeating it um developer upscaling developer upscaling is all about uh, uh, thinking in streams like thinking uh, anything happening in the world is like a stream it's, it's like if um, if a water uh, water is coming to you and your job is to kind of like maybe process the water and sweeten the water or, or something so a typical approach as you kind of like would pick is like okay i'll pick this water and do something i'll keep it there or something no you do not have that option in streaming universe like there's like a flood coming here so you cut the canals you create the tributaries but you cannot stop the water anywhere and hold it till you process it because it is always in data in motion it is it is always flowing so uh, a developer's mindset really needs to be up to their that thinking that it's a streaming system it's not kind of like a pick value of a and pick value of b from somewhere and by the time i pick uh, things in the world can wait <laughs> no <laughs> by the time you have picked a b maybe thousand more of them have come as well um so and uh, because of that topologies which you build like those tributaries like after this after this do this do this do this do this and you define those topologies and as you can understand those are very hard to debug as well so and and they always change based on you always figure out there is something better can be done and uh, also if you are changing the data models like at any time from the source side or the uh, kind of destination side it can always change your topology okay maybe some kind of a fields um, added but, uh, but if it is leading to continuous code refactoring on a regular basis then probably your data modeling skills needs to be upscaled mm, and all the question comes out of event stores or api endpoints should i give api endpoints or is state event store there's no kind of like a final straight answer to it but based on your use cases you can always um, work out whether it's important to expose something as an api endpoint or not i'll, I'll come to that because that's that's just something coming yeah uh, even processing uh, topologies can debugging can be extremely challenging as i said uh, so key challenge which comes with adopting any streaming uh, plat platform like kafka streaming is debugging uh, reviewing is poly, uh, streaming technology output at end of each stage can be overwhelming maybe you use a stream visualization tooling there are few for java universe uh, it can be hard to predict for your aggregation results also. If any bug creeps in during aggregation stage early, it's, it will propagate all the way through and skew all the other aggregation results. So it's a uh, peak is one point of, for example, Kafka stream DSL operation peak, like it's a kind of a system of print and if you're a Java guy, uh, that at every stage I'm just doing a print and seeing and like peak is basically a copy of that stream and you see what that stream contains now after certain intermediate transforming so again related to techno topology um, inefficient topology can have a lasting consequence nobody i know nobody probably have been told also writes a data processing pipeline data pipeline or topology right in one attempt nobody it always gets kind of transformed, changed, improvised, a better way emerges and all that. And it's therefore like one was talking about breaking down the domains and also important is breaking down the data transformation in simple chunks. One thing which I kind of like about Kafka uh, over uh, Apache Sparks, for example, is like uh, you cannot do like, like a six-way merger, five-way aggregations and all that. In Kafka, when you're doing like uh, 
you're doing always like a two at a time so i aggregate topic one to topic two and maybe the, the aggregated result now i can aggregate with topic three maybe that result which is aggregate of topic one and two aggregated and then aggregated with topic three maybe now this can be aggregated with the topic four sounds complicated it's actually not when it's kind of a written in a way neat uh, topology code but that really helps when you get the, your data transformation is broken down into chunks uh, because uh, and peak operation as I was telling so at each stage you can kind of see what's happening that with the kind of like stream of data coming how it's getting transformed when those chunks are manageable and small uh, you have a better control on the topology <clears throat> okay that's uh, my favorite one here on the seventh uh, item uh, dump pipe smart endpoints it's not my own creation it's smart and followers own word dump pipe smart creation uh, smart endpoints like uh, data movements should be dump process processes it should just like put like at, at a micro stage but if that data is required for something then it should be served in a presentable nice aggregated way so that is that is the job of when you write that smart endpoint so this is martin follows uh, kind of a guidance principle it also helps an organization to have a complete control over data uh, complete processing logic keep the data in the raw form whichever way they would like to keep for auditing purposes or re uh, replaying purposes and everything but this approach is not in benefit of vendors to sell when they are selling uh, data products so so you can google and find some articles they are calling the end of um, dump pipes smart pipes are the new thing because yeah this this vendor brings with a data processing tool um, and uh, they pick data they do some kind of a transformation or some changes maybe for example time zone change or time zone uniform format and they deliver i'm, I'm just telling you like i said they, they promise a lot more kind of workflows and whatnot uh, fetching uh, ag aggregated aggregatable data from rest of the universe and making something for you to deliver in our invention so eventually the, uh, the job of such data vendor the data tool vendor is to make you dependent on on that data pipe tool which is basically a smart pipe because there's a lot of processing they inject in that so you will hear a lot about uh, end of uh, death of uh, dump pipes so smart pipes are here and these are the uh, uh, like uh, pre-created workflows and you can create not just data transfer instructions but you can have a whole fancy workflow well uh, depend it, it might work for some but uh, if you want a complete ownership i, I still kind of uh, and we, we we talk with all these vendors all the time and some vendors we use also for some data uh, transformation and movement purposes but uh, it's uh, it's always good to keep your kind of ears uh, grounded on this principle dump pipe smart endpoints so that you know that what data is actually coming and what are my processing stages so some processing stage is not obscured by uh, some vendor implementation over there so and uh, uh, if uh, you get stuck down with certain topology happening in in one of the smart pipe uh, you have a better control of uh, redoing it if you change the vendor or you you still want to start with the raw and you found a better algorithm uh, better you want to split this time so so you have a better control uh, when you when you follow this uh, principle stateful workloads okay that is uh, something which comes to because uh, uh, Kafka uh, or any image streaming framework, we have concept of stateful transactions, stateful sorry, or stateful transformations and stateless transformations. Stateless transformations, we are we are not much bothered uh, because uh, now the Kafka, now these now these pieces of logic, the topologies are deployed on, for example, Kubernetes pods, OpenShift Kubernetes pods. And, and how the distributed computing and the pods work is the pods can go down, come back up, go, like this is, this is how it is. 
water bottle and they are they are designed for state less uh, transformations now stateful workloads for a kubernetes pod is a difficult thing it's a new thing altogether then 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 we also have state stores you know for rocks rocks db with uh, kafka you can always create those state stores the state stores also stay on the pod if the pod is coming back up then where the state store is so state store is actually the word says state so um, kubernetes csi is one of the thing to think about to use about uh, it takes care of like uh, which whichever pod is hosting that storage and it is to the storage that as a state store is available to you so uh, why why this is this comes up again in discussion is because uh, kubernetes or any kind of uh, container orchestration system they have always been designed for state less uh, workloads and whenever there's a data streaming streaming has a lot of stateful operations so you'll always come come somewhere like there frequent changing needs can pose challenges this is there's no thing called final aggregation there's even event streaming even though you kind of reach the precise time windows and the precise uh, aggregation functions because changing requirements can always create situation for a topology change Imagine a scenario where stream replaying becomes a requirement for you. Like it should never become a requirement for you because if you're even streaming, the stream data comes in, it reaches certain destination and in normal circumstances, you should not be asked to replay it. What if you kind of like, um, I, I came across this interesting product that Panda's uh, tiered storage, like its purpose is like, you can collect the data, keep in a binary format, and as long as you use our license, it's, it's a good strategy to kind of um, read back the data in uh, binary proprietary form, and it will be replayed from the topic it, where it belongs to. Good, but uh, Kafka or any other event streaming system, they are not a database, they are distributed logs. Um, and their job is to carry this information, helps you build your uh, data streaming topology and put the data to destination where you want to. And from there, like you should have a complete control of read back and do something or make it uh, make a new uh, source connector to that uh, data state. But if in a situation you are replaying, it becomes as a business requirement. No, no, no. Something is absolutely not okay here and something needs to be openly discussed. So, and such frequent changing needs can be challenging to your whole event streaming kind of uh, objective itself. Last one, a centralized ownership. Centralized ownership can be a threat. Yes, because we are talking about, we started with like defining business domains, decoupled businesses, processes. Decoupled business processes, yes, allow you to uh, kind of event stream between them or when an outside event comes you kind of like uh, pull certain items to go to one uh, domain and pull certain items to go to another domain i can give you an example of like uh, uh, in banking the customer address change customer address changes so it's a notification comes so di many different uh, processes have to kind of spin off in, in a bank for example customer data mass customer master data change customer address change means Oh, the, the anti-money laundering uh, kind of uh, scripts and uh, systems will be alerted like, hey, for this address change, something maybe needs to check secondary, like this, like a whole workflow. Uh, customer data change, customer address change specifically is like, okay, customer experience team. Oh, they treat their customers nicely. Whenever the customer changes their address, what they do is they send a welcome letter home, like, hey, welcome to your new home. This and uh, well, uh, thanks for banking with us. And this is the nearest bank branch available to you customer experience uh, for the customer address change but uh, centralized ownership in this case you it might you might conquer that ah, it would cut better but more centralized ownership can create more problems because this these are independent business workflows we are talking about decoupling domain driven design is a kind of a nice approach to deal with it but so that's it's why is it the more you decouple your business process on the start more you um, decompose your data uh, processing chunks also in kind of like a series of chunks, manageable chunks. 
and uh, that is an approach which kind of leads you uh, this is basically sum up my, all of my all of my 10 points also to come from like here these are my source data structures processes this is the whole topology and this is the topology too this is how it works and i have a complete control of all the checks of this topology and it delivers the final data out to certain place so basically th these are the 10 points i wanted to kind of uh, uh, cover i wrote like a lot of text on uh, slides as well maybe because it, it is useful it kind of uh, catches the eyes and you could be using this uh, slides for uh, more uh, kind of uh, follow-ups other than that i am open to questions thank you